a Christmas present. How exciting. But, um, wait, it's not Christmas, is it? There must be some reason that we have a Christmas present here today. Let's take a look at this tag. Do not open until Easter. Now that seems a little strange. How would you like to get a Christmas present that says, do not open until Easter? That's a long wait. December, January, February, March, and then Easter's in April. It's a long time. But did you know that Christmas and Easter are connected? They, they go together. You can't have one without the other. On Christmas, we celebrate Jesus being born. But what was he born for? Ultimately, to take on our sins and die on the cross. He did nothing wrong, but he was punished for what we did. With his resurrection on Easter, he claimed victory over sin. And when he rose from the dead, he was carrying eternal life for everyone who believes in him. Last week, we talked about Holy Week. And we started with Palm Sunday, with the arrival of Jesus in Jerusalem. Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, born in the stable in Bethlehem. Jesus, who fed 5,000. He walked on water. He healed the sick, the blind, and the lame. He even made the dead rise. The crowd lining the dusty road at Jerusalem welcomed him with praise, with joy, with songs, with smiles on their faces. They waved palms and they shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And then we talked about the upper room. A little later that week, Jesus met with his disciples in the upper room to celebrate the Passover meal. Before the meal, Jesus did something that really surprised them. He wrapped a towel around them, around his waist, and he washed their feet. It was a beautiful act of service to show his disciples that he came to serve, not to be served. And that's the example for us too, that we are to serve others and follow Jesus' example. Following the washing of feet, he shared the Last Supper. He broke the bread and he blessed the cup and he said, this is my body and blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Not everyone liked Jesus. He was getting too much attention. The religious leaders saw all of their power slipping away, and they decided to kill him. The enemies of Jesus decided to seek someone who would betray him. And for just 30 pieces of silver, Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray him. It was a greedy move. With one kiss, Judas would show them the man called Jesus. And with that kiss, the enemies grabbed Jesus and arrested him. Jesus was taken before Pilate. Pilate desperately wanted to get the people to let Jesus go. He offered the people a choice between a criminal who was already condemned and sentenced to die on the cross or releasing Jesus, who had done nothing wrong. It should have been an easy choice. But the people chose to set the prisoner free. And they shouted, crucify Jesus. Wow, whoever would have thought that they would have made a choice like that. 
It was a sad moment, a very sad day. Jesus, God's son, the only man who never sinned, the only man who never deserved to die was crucified on the cross. It was about noon, and then darkness covered the whole land until three o'clock. The sun stopped shining. The temple curtain was torn in two. Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. After this, he took his last breath. Joseph of Arimathea, who was a secret disciple of Jesus, asked Pilate for permission to take Jesus' body. He wrapped the body in long strips of linen cloth with spices and placed it in a tomb. Pilate ordered that the tomb be sealed with a large stone because he remembered that Jesus had said that he would rise in three days. And so we come to the story of the first Easter. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found the stone rolled away. She was filled with disappointment. To hear the rest of the story, we're going to look to the Gospel of John. Chapter 20. And in this Gospel, we have to remember that Jesus has been put on trial. He's been convicted of a crime that he didn't commit. They crucified him. They killed him, and they put him in a tomb. But there is something that maybe you've never thought of before. John writes about the things that he heard and he saw, and he says that Mary stood outside of Jesus' tomb, crying. Now, why would Mary be crying? Because she's disappointed. Jesus has died. The teacher, the rabbi, the amazing miracle worker is dead. She doesn't realize that it's the first Easter. All she knows that it's been a very disappointing day. She cried. She was outside the tomb. The body was missing. Let's read from John 20, verse 13. Someone comes up behind Mary and says, Woman, why are you crying? Just imagine this. She says, they've taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've put him. My friend, my teacher, I just wanted to honor his body. I just wanted to make sure that he had a proper burial, and I can't even find his dead body. How much worse can this day get for Mary? You talk about being disappointed. She says, I don't even know where they laid him. And then she's asked, ah, woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? And she thinks, okay, you're the gardener. You've been working around here. You take care of this place. And so she says to him, sir, if you know where they have carried him to, where they have put him, I'll go and get him. Just please tell me. The person looks at her and says, Mary. She turns and she said, Teacher. In one word, Mary's entire Easter was changed. With that word, Mary, she realized at that moment that she was not talking to the gardener. She was talking to Jesus. He had risen from the dead. It's hard for us to think about this whole story because we know the whole story. But for her, Mary, her entire first Easter was totally changed. She saw Jesus. He was alive. So this Easter, if you're feeling a little disappointed, and it's okay to be disappointed, 
because things are not the same this Easter as they were last Easter. Things all around us are different. It's no playing with friends, no big family gatherings, no shopping, no sports, no going to church together. But in spite of all that, don't forget, Easter is about one word. It's about Jesus. Because Jesus showed us once and for all, and he proved it on that first Easter morning, that he has the power over death. He is alive. Let's close today with prayer. Dear God, at this first Easter, we are reminded of the gift of your son, Jesus, who died and rose from the dead so that we can have the promise of eternal life. What a surprise it must have been for the followers to discover the empty tomb. Thank you for this wonderful gift. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.